Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for this. This is our uh, part one of our new project and that's going to be this World War II German Midget Submarine uh, by ICM in 172nd scale. This is the U-Boat uh, Type 27B Sea Hunt. I think Sea Hunt is German for seal. But, uh, uh, this is a rather small kit, uh, even though this is a large scale for uh, vessels, uh, it is a midget submarine, so it is kind of small. So I think there's nothing better to do but to do it, so let's just go ahead and jump down to the bench and get started on our sea hunt. All right, so first things first. Now, we do have a sprue map here in our instructions, and it does give us the numbers for the parts. And that's actually quite important on this particular kit. <laughs> uh, because ICM did not include uh, the part numbers on the part sprue. Yeah, there's no numbers there. <laughs> so uh, most of the parts are pretty easy to uh, identify, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so here we are. Step one, this is where we're going to start. And we're going to be putting the hull halves together. And then we'll worry about these blisters. And then we have our dive planes and also our rudder to, uh, to take care of in this step. So now we can start uh, cutting our parts off of our sprue. And I always like to cut these sprue gates really long and just leave those little nubs attached to the part. That way the sprue tree itself is not in the way and I'll be able to trim up. Uh, very close uh, to the part uh, without the uh, sprue being in the way and, and get it as close as I can to the part. And that really helps with being able to get the right angle with uh, the flush cut sprue cutters that I have here. And that way I don't have a, <laughs> a lot to, to trim off. Now of course almost always there's going to be a little bit that you're going to need to trim and for that We'll just use our hobby knife and get it as close as we can. Uh, it's not really important at this stage that we get it completely off there because uh, we'll be working with these seams <laughs> more than likely uh, after we've joined these hull halves together. Now when it comes to putting our hull halves together, there are no locator pins or tabs or sockets of any kind. <laughs> So this is really all by eye. We just got to kind of get this thing together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these rubber bands here to hold our halves together. And it's just two rubber bands. And this will put enough tension on our hull halves, the left and right sides, uh, so that they're not slipping and sliding around. Now what we can do now is we're going to go ahead and line up uh, any of these features, uh, especially these ribs that uh, go across the vehicle, the vehicle, <laughs> the sub, and uh, we want to line up all those, and those are like panel lines, and make sure that our bow is uh, lined up correctly, uh, along with the stern. And these parts fit actually pretty good, uh, considering that we don't have those alignment tabs, but we just want to make sure that we've got it uh, front and back and then the halves are lined up so that the top and bottom seams uh, match up really good. Now once we get all that adjusted those rubber bands will keep everything uh, in position for us and we'll be ready for some glue. So when it comes to our glue I'm just going to be using Tamiya Extra Thin here and we're going to start at the bow and just catch that seam and check our position Make sure everything is still flush and we don't have any misalignment. And we'll go ahead and do the stern as well, just right down the seam. Now with extra thin uh, Tamiya cement, it wicks really well down into that seam and that's going to really assist us here. Uh, and these parts are not warped or anything so that's a good thing and the seam closes up really well so there shouldn't be any issues with that 
and we're going to want to do the tops and the bottoms here now as as you can see I have neglected to do uh, any of the center section of the hull at the moment and we want to keep the glue away from the rubber bands too now once that tacks up for us and we don't have to worry about the halves moving around we can go ahead and remove the rubber band from the rear of the fuselage and the front as well and now we can continue with gluing up the fuselage through our center section making sure and I do go over the front too a little bit there but uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we've got plenty of glue uh, that will seep down into uh, the joint there and right here our lifting eyes are there, there's actually one on each side of the hull there uh, or each a whole half I should say so it kind of wants to spread apart so I'm just using the tweezers here to make sure that we close that gap and let that glue set up so we're just gonna hold it long enough to uh, get that to glue up for us we're also gonna do that uh, for our rear uh, lifting eye little bit of to me extra thin there and then we'll take our tweezers again and we'll just squeeze that together and give it a second there to tack up and of course we don't want to forget about the bottom of the hull so we're just gonna run our glue right on down the uh, the bottom seam so we do give this plenty of time to dry and then I come back uh, with my hobby blade here and I'm just gently scraping down that seam it's a really good fit so I don't think we're gonna have to have any filler uh, for the most part here and you if, if you're not familiar with using this technique if you're new to modeling then you can use a really sharp blade here and just kind of scrape the edge down now we don't want any flat spots so we just want to get this seam to blend in and then we can come back with a, a sanding stick now this is a foam uh, type sanding stick it's, it's really flexible so I don't have to worry too much about having a flat spot but you can see that I am I am kind of rounding it off from the side and uh, we're gonna sand across that seam and just get it uh, so that it, it matches up really well it's not a really big deal on this kit because this kit is it, it actually fits really nice I wish I had a lot of aircraft kits that would fit as nice as this does so now that we've got that done we can move on to the next part which is this little imperfection right here you can see it right there on the bow and I think that's probably some damage to the mold you can see here on the opposite side it's not there so we need to fix that so what we're going to do is just going to take my rounded blade here and it's going to kind of scratch and, and trim that right down and it comes down really now this plastic is really really soft uh, it's probably the softest polystyrene that I have ever uh, encountered in a model kit uh, which means that it will melt really fast with the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin and we do have to be kind of gentle with it whenever we're using sharp objects on it. <laughs> so next up we're going to fit these blisters and the, uh, the grooves that are in these blisters don't really fit around this ribbing so we're going to have to do some modifications to it I suspect I may even have to cut a little bit of that ribbing away underneath the blister in order to get that to seat uh, flat like uh, we want it to look. So here I'm just using a curved triangular file here to kind of widen those grooves a little bit and deepen them so that it doesn't hold the ends of these uh, blisters up away from the, uh, uh, the hull of the uh, sub. So this area seems to be the one where we're going to do the most test fitting. So we just want this to lay flat or as flat as possible. And we, I, I do end up putting some clamps on it when we go to glue it together. But it is necessary to trim just a little bit of those tall ribs away underneath it. 
Now, once I've got those glued on, we can go ahead to and, and start working on our rudder. So the cross pieces for the rudder, they are the exact same part number, so you don't have to worry about a top and bottom section here. And we just need to place them, uh, according to the instructions, it's in the, the, the last hole. There's two holes here for our rudder, so we're going to use the one most aft. <laughs> furthest aft on the sub. So I do put a little uh, dab of uh, to me extra thin there just to hold it into place until I get it aligned. Now we're going to go back and add some extra glue here. I, I tend to use probably a lot more to me extra thin than I need to but uh, I don't like for my parts to fall off. Uh, so we want to make sure that it is square to the hull there. And uh, we're just going to adjust it. And now we can go ahead and do the uh, upper one as well. Same thing here. And we want to check our alignment, make sure that uh, it's lined up with the, uh, the bottom one. That way we won't have any problem attaching our rudder. So when it comes to the rudder, again, just a little bit of glue. And then we can attach... Uh, our rudder. Now this is a twin rudder uh, set up here and as you can see there is a long slot in the side of the rudder and that actually goes down towards uh, where the propeller is actually going to be. So that slot should be in alignment with the, uh, uh, the actual propeller shaft housing there. And we can put the one on the other side as well. Same thing. And once these are in place and it tacks up a little bit, because it, it, it is small parts, a little fragile there, just want to check, make sure that everything is square and that it looks right. Make our little adjustments to it. And with that done, that looks pretty good. So next up is our horizontal stabilizers here. And there is this slot that they go in. And there is a left and a right uh, stabilizer that needs to go on. I think they're called stabilizers. <laughs> anyway, uh, they will only fit uh, one way. So you don't, you don't have to worry about uh, keeping them sorted because of the, the way their contour is. They'll only fit one way. So we need to get those into place. And again, of course, uh, there's always a possibility of them not being aligned properly. So you can always make small adjustments here and make sure that everything looks good and square. Now when it comes to our dive planes, at least I think these are referred to as dive planes, uh, they have a pin that goes into a hole in the side of the fuselage and we can just stick those into place and kind of line those up. Now these parts uh, have the exact same part number, so they're identical. So we don't have to worry about a left or a right when it comes to these. And now all we need is a little touch of, uh, to me, extra thin here, just to secure them into place. Now you could position these if you wanted to. So we're gonna check the fit here of our stand. Make sure that that sits right where it's supposed to. And that looks pretty good. Now we got something to hold the model into place. So now we're gonna go on to the next step. And that's step two. We're gonna be working with everything around the conning tower here. So I've already cleaned up all the parts here. So what we're gonna do first is there is this, I think it's called a spray shield. Uh, it actually sets down flat on top of the conning tower, so we're going to glue that up to the uh, upper deck plate here. Just make sure we get enough glue on it there. I like to use glue. <laughs> so, uh, we'll set that aside and let that dry while we go ahead and attach these side shields here. And they fit as you would expect. 
Now they do have a little slot or a little ridge that it goes down the side there across the top of the sub. Well, we've got a nice wide glue point here, so just put a little bit of glue on it there, and then we'll run some down that, that little ridge. Now there is a left and a right, so we don't want to mix these up because there are drain holes in the bottom of this, and they need to be down next to the hull. And once we get that one on, we can go ahead and put the one on the other side as well. And like I say, this, this uh, plastic is really soft, so you really don't need to use as much glue as you see me using here, <laughs> but uh, uh, old habits uh, die hard, don't they? And as you can see, I, I just keep adding glue. So <laughs> it, it is never, ever going to come apart. So I, I, I really hope that everything is lined up correctly. <laughs> That's why I always test fit. Plenty of test fitting before we get way uh, into the glue. And now we can go ahead and attach the top plate here. The I guess we, we're going to call it a deck plate. And uh, the spray shield there on the front. So it does bow away a little bit from the conning tower. So probably the best thing to do here is we're going to glue these tails here on the side. That long aft portion of it. You see there, I'm, I'm using nautical terms. <laughs> I just want to make sure that it's seated down against uh, the little tabs that are on the inside there. And just want to make sure that the glue sets up just enough to tack it into place. And now I'm just going to hold the spray shield down into place there. And we'll glue up the front section there. So we have a hatch and entrance tube here. Uh, I'm sure it has some sort of name, but I, I don't really know what it is. Uh, maybe some of you Navy guys can straighten me out on that. Uh, but it just glues straight down um, through that deck on the top of the conning tower. I just want to make sure I got enough glue on it there so that it doesn't dry out by the time I get it uh, fixed into position. And there's no fit issues with that. So the next thing we're going to do is we've got these uh, ribs that run down the side of the hull. So we're going to skip doing the periscope and the mast right now because I probably probably end up breaking those off. Now these actually we need to do a little bit of fitting for them. Um, they don't really fit into the slots like they're supposed to. And there are some of these ribs here that extend down into that area that we just kind of need to scrape out. So we're going to clean that up. And there's one forward too. Always test fit your parts before you attempt to try to glue something in. And once we get that all cleaned up, we can go ahead and do our final test on it. And make sure that everything is just like we would expect it to go. And then we can just glue it into place. And of course we've got the one on the other side to do as well. So there is a little kind of a buckle piece here. Uh, I, I guess these hold the torpedoes in, in, uh, in place. And it does want to kind of bow out from the hull a little bit, but that's okay because this plastic is really soft, like I said before. So we'll just kind of put some to me extra thin on it, press it into the hull there, hold it long enough for it to grab. And uh, if it wants to separate like this one does, uh, just add a little more glue to it. And that'll soften the plastic too. So so we have two little brackets uh, on the side of the submarine. Two, uh, two on each side uh, for our torpedoes. And there is a little semicircular indentation here on the side of the hull for these to fit. Now the two on the right side are different than the two on the left side, so you want to make sure that you don't get these mixed up because they actually angle forward just a little bit. So if you've got them trailing to the rear of the sub, or aft, I should say <laughs> aft of the sub, then uh, you've got them on the wrong side. 
And we just use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin there to get them to stick into place. And they, they go in right above that rib that we put on earlier. And just want to make sure that it gets down into that half moon uh, area there. And you want to make sure that they're all nice and even lined up with one another. We don't have them kind of dysfunctional. <laughs> um. So now we can worry about the mast and the periscope. And a little bit of to me extra thin on there. Now this mast goes into this small hole here uh, on the back, the, behind the conning tower. And we're just going to press it into place and check our alignment. We'll make sure that it's straight before the glue sets up. And then we're going to do the exact same thing uh, with our periscope. But now the little indentation that it goes into is way down inside there because there's a rather large slot in the deck for it. So we don't have any help uh, keeping it uh, vertical the way it's way it needs to be so we we need to pay particular attention here to make sure that we do get it straight <laughs> we don't want it all lopsided or leaning off to one side or or canting to the rear all right so on to the next step which is torpedoes now I think it's step five and uh, so we're gonna put these torpedoes together now just like on our hull halves there are no locator tabs or pins or locator holes so we just have to line this up uh, the best that we can and as you can see they kind of spring away if you if you pinch it in the middle they spring away from the front uh, where it needs to go together and, and also uh, on the tail of the torpedo uh, torpedo if I can say that um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these wooden uh, clothespins to hold them together. And I'm putting it in the curved slot on the, on the clothespin. And that'll do two things for us. It uh, will force uh, the two halves together because of the curvature uh, into the wooden slot there. And then all we got to do is double check it, make sure that our halves are uh, lined up and also that we are in alignment front to rear with each half and once we are we're just going to run us some to me extra thin down the middle of our torpedo here and we'll do this on both sides now the only part that we're going to glue up right now is just going to be the center of the torpedo and we'll set that aside uh, and give it just a few minutes uh, to go ahead and tack up so that it, it's not going to move on us. So once that's tacked up for us, we can go ahead and use the same close pins here. And we can close up that gap in the front, uh, on the front of the uh, where the warhead is on our torpedo. And we'll glue that up. And the good thing about using wooden close pins is that it's the, the spring pressure is not so great. Uh, that it wants to snap off of a curved surface and the wood actually kind of grips uh, the plastic better than uh, those plastic clamps do. So they come in very handy and of course we're going to do the exact same thing here uh, on the aft end aft end <laughs> of the torpedo. So now we're on to our propellers for our torpedoes and it is a twin propeller setup on the torpedo and as you can see one of them has a pin and the other one has the cone so the one with the pin will go on first so we will attach that to the torpedo first so when it comes to these small propellers uh, word of caution uh, be very careful that you don't lose them because there are no spares. And uh, if, you, if you lose one, uh, 
I, I don't think that I would be able to make one that small personally, but uh, since there aren't any spares, be very careful with these. Uh, we can't lose them. And we just want to make sure that we get it square uh, to the torpedo body so that it looks pretty good. Now we will let this set up a little bit, and we'll go ahead and glue the one up on the other torpedo as well. But uh, we need to let this uh, the glue stiffen it before we start messing with that, adding the, uh, the second propeller. So when it comes to the second propeller, uh, just pretty much the same thing as we did with the first one. But in this particular case, uh, I think that it looks much better if we offset uh, the blades on the uh, propeller from one another. It gives that extra dimension look there. Uh, and more definition uh, if, if they are kind of staggered a little bit and of course we just want to make sure that it's also square to the torpedo kind of like that now of course you could paint these up separately and add them later uh, I tend to paint everything on the kit as much as possible and I don't have to worry about losing it all right so last step step six uh, we've got the propeller to put on our uh, on our sub and also the torpedoes but we will leave the torpedoes off so here in our shaft housing for our propeller for the sub there's supposed to be a hole there because our uh, submarine propeller has a, a pin that's supposed to go into the hole and there isn't one so I just use my hobby knife to center up where I need to drill. And I'm just going to drill this by hand. I'm not going to use the handy drill by Tamiya because uh, I, don't, I don't want to go too far. Uh, so we'll just drill that out uh, by hand. And then all we need is a little bit of glue. And then we can go ahead and place our propeller right where we drilled our hole. And of course, you're going to want to make sure that it's uh, inserted all the way and that it is square to uh, the axis of the sub. And you should be able to kind of see it through those slots that's in our rudder. Yeah, just make sure that it's not <laughs> all kind of wonky or whatever, okay? <laughs> Now we need to take care of some seams, so I'm going to use Mr. Surfacer 500 for that. Now this stuff, make sure that you shake or uh, uh, mix this really well, especially if it's been sitting around for a while. And we're just going to run it down the seams here of our torpedo because that seam is is a little bit more prominent uh, than than I would like. So we're going to go ahead and fill that with this, and then we'll set it aside and let it dry you need to give it a good 15 minutes or so and this really dries quick so it's not like we have to wait a very long time for it now once it has dried we can go ahead and just sand it down nice and smooth now i am using the uh, uh, these polishing sticks that have that flexible foam in the center of them so that uh, we're not getting a a actual flat spot there and my, my polishing sticks are a little bit worn so I'm having to make several passes with it but we're just going to sand that down uh, and hopefully uh, that will fill that seam for us I think it's gonna work pretty good for us so we have some areas that we need to attend to I'm gonna use perfect plastic putty and this is a water-based putty uh, so it will dissolve with water which makes it really easy to use and we're going to take care of a couple of things mainly uh, the areas that we need to concentrate on is where these thick ribs go down uh, and and we had those fit issues uh, with those blisters uh, where we were uh, filing them and we had to trim down the ribs as well to get them to fit uh, nice and flush against the hull. So using uh, perfect plastic 
putty for this. Uh, we'll be able to clean that up pretty good, I think. Now, once we fill all of our holes uh, and let this dry, and it only takes about 15 minutes for it to dry, uh, we're going to use some water, and I'm also going to use a Q-tip or a cotton bud or an earbud or <laughs> whatever your preference is. Uh, and we are just wiping over top of it here, kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Uh, in this particular case, that's not quite enough for us. I uh, can't really get down into the cracks there, uh, the seam. So I'm using a wet toothpick to do that. And we can kind of sculpt it. Now, it's important to let this dry completely and then add water to the surface of the perfect plastic putty. That way we're not pulling the putty out. We're just kind of... Uh, smoothing over and sculpting the outside of the putty if that's going to make any sense to you <laughs> i hope that makes sense <laughs> uh, that way we're not pulling uh, fresh putty out that we had just put in so it sculpts pretty easy and once we're done with our cleanup that's kind of what we have here and we will be ready for paint So here we are. I think uh, our assembly phase is done. Now we have not attached our torpedoes and we haven't attached it to the stand either. It's just uh, kind of stuck in place there. And the next step will be to paint this up, but that's going to be in part two. Uh, we'll go ahead and paint it and uh, get our decals on and uh, probably do our final reveal. So this will be a really short series, but it's a, it's a really nice looking model, I think, uh, once we get it together. Small fit issues, not very much of a fit issue at all. So um, yeah, yeah, I, I think I recommend this model even for a beginner. All right, so... I guess that will bring this video to an end. That's the end of part one. And I'll be looking uh, for part two, which should be out uh, next Friday. And uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep making these videos. And don't forget to leave me a comment because I read every single one and I answer every comment I get. And I really appreciate your support. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I hope that today I earned that subscription. And uh, don't forget to press that notification bell so that uh, you won't miss uh, the next installment, especially on this build. Uh, with that, guys, I want you to stay safe and happy modeling, and I'll see you in the next one.